and I pray at ease in the short time that you are with us this day. But, perhaps, Majesty, it would please you to gaze upon these brave men, all whom are stout-hearted in support of your cause. I think, sir, any gentleman in the crowd will see that, rather than gazing upon the men of Mars, the soft face of Venus here invites me. Ah. Is this your lady wife, sir? It is indeed, step forward. May I introduce to you, Majesty, she who is my wife, this now speechless man shall Dressed all in green there, you remind me of my own dear wife. Thank you. You are most lovely, madam. But do mind if, before we go to hospitality, I first do my martial exploit for the colonel here, and your husband for the colonel, and see how we have fitted up the states of war. Yes? Very well. Majesty. Brave looking uh, fellow. This is Master Stephen Mathias. One of the most trusted servants of my house. Agent and surveyor, he has been to me now many a year. And stout-hearted and in his courage to you. He hath served me right well and doubtless good sir shall serve you well this day to make it. your visit and your stay as comfortable as you can. Great right, yourself, right. Your Majesty. Uh, then, if the Colonel trusts you, sir, I entrust myself yeah. to your fine guidance. Um, as to what time we have dinner and who is invited and all these other things, I have full of questions, and you, sir, must be full of answers, I am sure. I have, I have the answers to give your Majesty first. Would you care to look upon the military manoeuvres that will take place? Yes, sir, shall we? Lead on. Now, you know that I have some 2,500 people coming with me here. And I will edit. We are aware, that, sir, that when kings travel, they do not travel alone. I As you'll understand, good people, my three kingdoms are in a state of war these past years, these past three years. But alas, good friends, good subjects, loyal-hearted Welsh folk, I trust you are, this state of war, I see no end to it. We have just met with a check at Naseby fight this very summer, 1645. But still, I am full of hope that with your stout, royal and loving heart and your strong, manly Welsh courage, we shall make the red dragon fly and defeat our enemies. Will you help me in this? Yes! Gerard, mark out those that said nothing and follow them, sir. We need all the men. We are here, Colonel Pritchard, for your help too, sir. And not, just your, not just your tenants, sir, but your own coffers, sir, your own men. Well, I will pledge to your majesty all that I can give, although I would pray also that you give acknowledgement that Glamorgan, why, we have given now to such great extent that many men no pain, sir, but still we shall give all that we can. Very well. Course. That answer pleases us marvellous much. Now we shall watch the evolution to the pike and the musket. <laughs> Captain, a salute for his majesty. You are somewhat close to peace. 
Brave and saucy fellow, are you? No not, bishops, no popery. <laughs> you're a brave man, sir. Either you're stone drunk or completely mad, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that you're thinking of all these armed fellows, sir. I do not uh, think, sir, first, sir, that you will find any argument you, against popery in these parts. <laughs> stone drunk, your majesty. In front of the lady, rather than blind. When the wind changes direction, Colonel, we can smell him yeah, coming. Yeah. <laughs> no, sir, sir, when we take your, your innocent, rude remarks, to be just that, innocent and rude. Never mind. We shall watch our soldiers, sir, and see what's to come, eh? We shall, we we shall make sure, sir, that you will make amends for your outbursts. We will have ten pounds for you for the King's cause. Make it guineas. Guineas. <laughs> Have you, sir, thought of joining my army or rejoining my army? Because I think you served before, sir, did you not? At Edge Hill? No, no, not me. No? And so you have a mighty fine brother who's just like you and a very strong soldier, sir. Have you got any charges? I don't think so. Are you going to join the army, Les? No, I'm a bit old for either. No, sir, you're not too old. We've had another gentleman try that excuse, sir, and it will not wash. <laughs> Gerald, do you have an answer to this gentleman? Oh, indeed. Do you, do you know, sir, of uh, John Marchman of Sussex? No. Eight and ninety in his age. And he is now known to have taken up arms and fights in the king's cause. He hath been seen upon the field of battle, his musket in hand. He fights as well as any man a quarter of his age, he has said. Now you see, that's inspiring talk, is it not, sir? Eh? Mm -hmm. He hath fought not only... Think how proud she will be of you. <laughs> uh, assuming she's with you, of course. <laughs> OK. Ah, here we are. Think of the honour and the glory, so I see he's inspired already. Look at that smile. He's on halfway there. When the, cannon, when the cannon fires for the third time, good folk, if you cover it, yes, to mitigate the distress, keep your mind. It sounds a strange thing to say, but when the shock of the cannon presses upon the chest, if the mouth is open, it's not a <laughs> oh, it, 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 it is not that we have, would have you, Mistress, the aspect of a gargoyle or a Polish church. <laughs> Indeed. Yes, yes. Although it is most amusing to gaze upon. <laughs> 
the, again the most amusing face that's there. Uh, yeah, this is the one that we should be watching. Yes, that was somewhat lukewarm, I think. Looking back fellow there, not you, sir. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> fellow in the checkered garb, this Republican rascal. Go on, I'll go on. You level up. <laughs> I would bid you, good folk, cast your eyes upon this saucy fellow, for already he hath made now some discourse against his majesty. There is only one king! And here he good. stands before you, good sir! And that's now to subdue this fellow. Let us once again hear that oath. God save the king! God save the king! As I, your commended good and loyal folk. Oh, sir, well, I would merely say this unto you, sir. Uh, every man, of course, is a king in his own household, is he not? As you must be in yours, sir. Um, is this your lady? Daughter. Your daughter. Where is your wife, sir? In Scotland. Oh. I wonder why she's so far from you, sir. <laughs> Supporting... Our the, the covenant, is, sir. As we say, sir, as we say, it is a sorry house where the hen crows louder than the cock, sir. Mm. Be a man, sir, not just here on the field before your king, but be a man at home, sir, and then you'll be a true Christian gentleman. <laughs> well, it is well known, is it not, that the men of Scotland do carry a pike greater length than the men of England? Which is obviously. Gentlemen, we are marvellous pleased at these, your exertions, this day. This Plus, all the household that are coming with me, Colonel, shall fill up your meadow full of martial men. I doubt not that although we have lost that Napier fight, we have not lost this war. There are many more to come, gentlemen, in which you will play yourselves a distinguished and valiant part. God save you all. And I beg and crave that you shall, in time, when these unhappy wars are at an end, return unto the bosom of your wives and your families and your children and kindred when these wars are at an end, sir. And soon they shall be, I think, no. for no man can strand in the face of true majesty and see himself victorious when it is true that he who stands before you today, your king, your lord sovereign, appointed by God, it is only he truly who shall take the throne of this land. Brave boys, you are commended, for it settles my breast right well to know that you are here and that his majesty's progress shall continue with you to look to his truest good. God's blessings upon you all, each and every one. Well said, Colonel. Hey, sir. Now, after this display of martial warfare and uh, execution, sir, I would fain hear some music on the way to your house. I believe there are some players of the recorder. There are indeed, good sir. We may tarry a while there, a short mount. I think there are some folk who would wish for you to be seen with them. So. Oh, that as well. We may do so. We may do so. Um, well, we shall bring forward uh, Gerard, and who, what's your man's name? Stephen? It is Matthias. Your land agent, you He is my land agent, Stephen Matthias. Well, bring him here, because I, I will not just sully myself on this road. I will step away from you, sir, but I'll send you the loudest. It's a long time ago. Ensign, I've just decided to make, that you will make free with the Colonel Sellers. As much beer as you can all drink. God save you. Huzzah! You have enough beer, please, man. Oh, I have enough, sir. We have we have taken steps to say by which way they will be Carry it to Whitehall, there to be a man called to be there. Because you have a good bow and a mighty fine accent. You, sir, are close. My wife has a great liking for it. She now has a liking for all things French. Very much in the same place.